Most of our physical characteristics are indicators of where we are from, a human reflection of the geography of the world, but they are also much more. They are flags that signal our population group, our so-called race. And what exactly is race? Why do different physical characteristics mean so much? Are some skin colors better than others? How did racial differences take on this emotional intensity, this source of division within society? How many millions have died in how many wars in defense of their so-called race? It's probably the biggest question facing all humanity. It's natural like, for people to want to know their ancestry. You can see we German, you can see there we German. Germans from retreat. It's a question that shapes how we see ourselves. Now, science is giving us some amazing answers. It is a revelation for me. I mean, I had absolutely no idea. Africa. For my mother? The V&A waterfront, Cape Town, at the southern tip of Africa one of the continent's most popular tourist attractions, but also a favorite gathering place for South Africans. At first glance, it's a melting pot of differences. Different appearances, different origins, different ancestries. But looks deceive. What the eye does not reveal is that every single one of these people shares a common bond. Somewhere in the distant past, they can all trace their ancestry back to Africa. And despite your physical appearance, you could be closely related to any of these people. Science has recently given us the key to unlock the mysteries of our past to take us back thousands of years to our first ancestors and to unveil the fascinating journey that led us here. After entering trance, the shamans went to a waterhole, being careful to keep to westward, lest the creature catch their scent. When the creature came out to graze, the man threw a noose over its horns. Once they had secured the rain animal, the rain shaman led the procession across the country to where he wanted the rain to fall. There, the shaman would cut the she rain and gently milk her so that her rain would fall softly on the ground. She will rain softly on the ground so that it is wet deep down in the middle. Then the bushes will sprout and become nicely green so that the springbok will come galloping. Tebe and Petra method, got down to work on the translated manuscripts yeah. to find out yeah. what information yeah. the Timbuktu yeah. astronomy Would manuscripts held in pages, order to uh, understand sub-Saharan Africa's of the first signs. Of the, um, of the mm -hmm. you see here? I was going through this, just uh, you know, uh, scanning through the manuscripts. 
I saw that this manuscript uh, makes reference to Timbuktu. So mm -hmm. the author of this manuscript must have either lived or used to visit Timbuktu a lot during his lifetime. Yeah. Uh, apparently, he lived in the north of Timbuktu in a town called Arwan, which is the north of Timbuktu. Mm -hmm. And he died in 1744. Um, Abul Abbas Al-Galawi, I mean, the author of this. Manuscript 3670 has a section dealing with the five daily prayers and how to determine when to perform them. The morning of Fajr prayer takes place at dawn, when it first starts to get light, but before the sun becomes visible. The midday prayer and the afternoon prayer are the most interesting from an astronomical point of view and use shadow lengths to determine the prayer times. In other ways, they used to use a gnomon uh, to, to determine time during the day. And a gnomon is just a stick that you put on the ground uh, of specified length. Yeah. And then you determine the length, the variation of the length of the, of the shadow throughout the day. And from there you can estimate you can determine the times for prayer and things like that. The midday or Zohr prayer can take place after Norman shadow has reached its shortest and starts to lengthen. Yani. <laughs> أنك إذا أردت معرفة وقت العصر فزد على قدام الزوال قامة أبدا وهي سبعة على التقريب للزهر. This means that the afternoon or asa prayer starts when the shadow equals the length of the shadow at midday plus the length of the gnomon stick itself. Today, prayer times are available on tables, newspapers, the internet, or even via SMS. But behind every method lie the same astronomical calculations that have been used since the birth of Islam. Towards the northern berg lives an extraordinary artist, Sibu Siso Mbele, who is driven by his passion for flight. Sibu Siso combines his unique blend of imagination and ingenuity. He makes magic out of very little and by doing so transcends his physical environment. Hi Sibu Siso. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Pano in Kalang on nineteen eighty six. Well, Safund. Yeah, well, no, go to lie. Sassy, Sassy Pantle and Gansay Lalla. Yeah. Well, to live on a late to the Nugget, in a patron, to be a lay. We bring up a yearling, eat long in Kalas. I say times or ends, I'm a quest called Yeah. Testing in the Miller and Bill and Wakanda Yeah. How one get a peasant? Yeah, yeah, one get a Yeah, and then one I'm feeling a mal. Oh, feeling a mal. Oh, my yeah, some Yeah. Yeah. I bought it because I'm coming to tomorrow. Come out. 
Sibusiso has taken his passion even further and made a giant helicopter in which he lives and works. He has used old combis and cars as well as other scrap metal to create a securely engineered structure. Oh, la, go we second floor, la. Yeah, second floor. Okay, and here's the factory. If you look down, you see all the, all the wings. All the wings you've got here, cheese. 